I'm here with Jackie Cobb. We got connected through Josh Lajani, and she lives in Georgia. She's lost 56 pounds, has a great story. And so first off, Jackie, maybe we could just start off with a little bit about yourself and where you're from. Uh, well, I'm from originally from Cincinnati, Ohio. I moved to Lawrenceville, Georgia four and a half years ago. Okay, great. And then you've lost 56 pounds, right? Correct, 56 pounds. Awesome. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So for you, you know, your your weight, it's something obviously you're working on now. Is it something that you had, you know, had you weighed a bit more for a bit of your life, or like as a kid growing up, or was it something that you became aware with or struggled with later in life? Well, as a kid, um, I was up and down. I was a skinny kid, and then um, I was a heavy kid, so I was up and down. And then when I got into adulthood, I became, I was heavy most of my adulthood life. Um, I had children and I gained more weight. Um, so pretty much my adulthood, I, I got heavier and I started to get unhealthy. Okay. And then what did food look like for you kind of throughout this whole process? You know, what was, what was eating and what was lifestyle like during, you know, when you were growing up? No. Uh, there was just no, I was not conscious of what I was eating, um, how I was eating, the time of day I was eating. Um, I just, there was no type of, okay, you're eating bad or you're eating fried food or you're eating sugar at 10 o'clock at night. So there was just no, um, I was not conscious of what I was eating and how I was treating my body. And I know this is probably a little bit, uh, I'm kind of throwing a softball here, but was that just for you or was that kind of everybody around you as far as that attitude of not being conscious about what you're eating, feeling comfortable eating, you know, fried food at night, sugar, all that kind of stuff? That was everybody around me. And when I say everybody around me, that was my family. Um, it was just, you know, no one was conscious of, what and how they were eating, how they were taking care of themselves, even though, you know, the family is riddled with diabetes and high blood pressure and everyone depended on taking medicine, taking medication. But the other part to that is no one was eating right. No, everyone was still eating the same, same mess, the same garbage, the same bad food. Do you think there was a lack of connection there? Like, do you, do you think it was, you know, that was just something that was perceived as uh, one of those things that you just accept with old age? Or was there any connection between, you know, I know the food that I'm eating is causing these issues, but I'd rather still just eat it? I think that there was no connection. The disconnect is that, um, the disconnect was that no one really paid attention to food being part of the problem. And and for you yourself as a you know as a kid growing up, getting younger, did you just think that was kind of in your future? That was in the cards for you as well as far as, you know, you were going to have medical issues, diabetes was going to become a problem, medication was going to become key, you know, as you got older in life, is that something you just you just had anticipated? Yeah. Yeah. As I got older in life, I did. And the thing that um, really turned the light bulb on for me was um, the passing of my mother, the passing of my dad, the passing of my brother, all from um, the unhealthy, the unconscious unhealthy eating and lifestyle that they live. Um, I worked in healthcare for a very long time and I kind of put two and two together with taking care of people for so many years and then it being in my own family in terms of the different diseases and how food contributed to the diseases and the unhealthiness of it. So the, like I said, the light bulb didn't come on until um, the passing of family members. Um, you know, growing up, I, my mother was diabetic and I've watched her stick herself so many times a day and 
inject yourself. And this was like the normal thing, like, you know, this is how we have to live. And it's not how we have to live. You know, I kind of, I kind of learned that in the light, when the light bulb came off for me, like, oh, this is not normal when everyone else thought it was normal. Because I have now four living brothers and my sister and out of the four brothers, uh, three are diabetic. My sister's diabetic and I have a niece that's diabetic. And so I'm trying to help everyone else turn that around a little bit with nutrition. I have a brother with cancer and he's been calling me with, you know, questions. I've been giving him information on nutrition, on certain things to eat. And it's been helping. It's been helping. Wow. And, and what was that, you know, I know you said that, uh, in a message to me that growing up, you were quite the athlete. So Mm -hmm. like, what was, what point in life was that for you? Was that in, in high school, you know, before high school, college, where, where was that where you were at a place where you were super physically active? Um, that was high school. It was high school. Um, yeah. And, and at what point, you know, what was the, I know you kind of briefly mentioned it, but can you kind of take me through the timeline of life for you from there to having kids and, and kind of what that meant for changing. I'm guessing that meant you became more sedentary or you just had more responsibility. It's yeah. In high school, I was pretty active. Um, and I was responsible for me at the time when I knew that I was only responsible for me and, you know, um, not being responsible for taking care of someone else when I, became responsible for taking care of two little boys. My life got set on the back burner. Um, you know, the, the, you know, the whole active things, um, my sport of passion was volleyball. And so I played volleyball a lot, a lot, a lot. And then I was unable to play. I wasn't able to play as much as I would have wanted to, because I had these kids to take care of. Um, and so that's where the weight gain started. Uh, when I took, you know, when the focus, when I took the focus off me and on my children, that's when the weight gain started. That's where the, uh, um, the, you know, the unconsciousness of being aware of what I was doing, what I was eating, um, sinked in because I became unaware. I just came so became so focused on my children and making sure they had what they needed that I didn't have what I needed to stay healthy. And I never was diagnosed with anything. I just started to feel bad. And I knew that soon I was going to, you know, have some diagnosis if I didn't turn it around. And how long did it take to get from high school till you were kind of at your unhealthiest? Um, high school, my unhealthiest, uh, I'd say, I'd say about 10, 15 years. Okay. And then what was, what was life like at that point? You know, whenever you were, you know, kind of at your, maybe your, your, your highest weight or where you were feeling the worst, what was life like at that point? What were some struggles at that point? Um, my highest weight I got to was 260. Um, and it was just the struggle, the struggle point was I didn't feel pretty. I didn't feel, I didn't feel worthy. Um, I was always tired. Um, I was, I I felt lazy. I didn't want to do things. I didn't want to get out and do things. Um, and that turnaround point was, um, me just not feeling good about myself. And did you have a moment, I know you mentioned, you know, you had your parents pass, you saw other people pass kind of around you, but was there, was there a very specific moment where you said enough is enough, uh, or was it really kind of more of a gradual transition? There was a moment when I said enough is enough. And that moment, um, was when my brother passed. Um, my brother was 51 years old. Um, he had high blood pressure issues. 
he had bad kidneys. He was a dialysis patient and he died um, in the middle of his dialysis treatment. His heart stopped because it was too much. You know, my brother was uh, probably close. He was about six, four and probably close to 400 pounds at one point. And he still lost quite a bit of weight. He lost 100 pounds, but the damage had been done to his kidneys. He still struggled with high blood pressure, and the damage had been done. And that was when I said enough was enough that I, you know, that I had to turn this around at some point. Even then, I hadn't, you know, I hadn't really started. I thought about it. The, the process, the thinking process was there for me to get started. Um, but I hadn't even started until um, I started to see myself become more like him in terms of what I looked like, in terms of the weight, um, being heavy, you know, just that was my turning point. And what, you know, had you had you tried to lose weight before or had you had you made any kind of conscious decisions to change anything up before? You know, I did. Um, I can't remember how long ago, but a few years ago um, at the church that I was a part of back home, um, there was this push. There was this movement. um, It's called Health Leadership Institute. And they it was a program that included um, five African-American churches to get involved. And it was kind of like a a contest. Um, the organization that ran it, they, um, they supplied us with a nutritionist, um, and a personal trainer that came to the church and we did, uh, aerobics classes or, um, we had this, this get moving class. And then we had a nutritionist that came once a week and we had to weigh in, we had to do measurements, we had to do screenings, and whichever church had the better numbers or lost the most weight, um, you know, they they won a prize. But each church ended up winning a prize. There was a, a, a prize of ten thousand dollars to split between the five churches. So everybody got something. So, but it was it was it was geared toward um, the African American community getting healthier. And that was when, that was when I started and I lost weight when it, when it, when I started the process after my brother passing. And then what did, uh, you know, it sounds like you had lived for 10 plus years kind of operating under a certain, um, you know, like you said, unconsciousness in terms of eating and then, and then gaining weight. What was your plan of attack to change basically everything you had known for 10 or 15 years? Um, it was just to stay active. I hadn't even, I haven't even buckled down on the nutrition part of it. Some things I was still eating. Um, and it was just to, to, to go out and be active. I go out and walk at least three miles a day. Um, and then I, you know, started to, do the nutrition. Now, at the time, I would just eat fish and chicken, fruits and vegetables. Um, and that was when uh, I think I lost like 18 pounds the first time around. And what what was di- what was different this time? You know, what did you put in? Is, was there anything that you put in place? Was there anything that you put in place this time to make sure that you knew that it was only going to be forward momentum, that you were only going to lose more weight, that things were only going to get better, that there was no turning back? Was there anything that you kind of put in place to make sure of that? Uh, Yeah, uh, people around me. Um, You have to surround yourself with certain people to make it happen. Like, for example, like I said, I tried to... Um, be an example for my family, but you know, some of the times that don't always work out. Um, so you have to surround yourself. I surrounded myself with, 
um, the right people, um, the right friends, uh, the accountability partners, um, people who are going to, you know, keep me accountable for, you know, to continue on and to, you know, be around positive people. Because even though you have family, they're not going to always be supportive. Um, they're not, not going to always hold you accountable. Um, and then they're not going to chime in to what you're doing. And in, in, the, in the end, it could pull you down. So the one thing that helped me right then and there was changing the people that was changing the people I was around. And I think I saw online now that you know, you're, you're pretty physically active. Um, where did your, where did your physical activity kind of ramp up and how did that happen? Um, <laughs> it ramped up. Oh, uh, I'd say over the last, over the last two and a half years is where it really, really ramped up in terms of now I'm, I'm much older. I'm over 45 and, um, even though I was an athlete in my younger days, I was I don't feel like I was I wasn't this active. Um and it ramped up when when over the last two and a half years when I saw how much I could do and how far I could go, um, that was when it ramped up. So over the last two and a half years. And it almost sounds to me from what you're saying that you kind of surprised yourself. Yeah, <laughs> I did. <laughs> I really surprised myself. I did. And when I surprised myself, you know, I, I started reaching for more goals. I started to uh, wanted to do more and do different things. And um, I, I truly did. I surprised myself. So what is that? What is that looking like now? What are you doing, you know, physical activity wise and maybe what are you doing now that you thought would have been previously impossible? Um, well, of course the running, I've never would in a million years think that I would be loving distance running <laughs> because like I said, in my high school days and in my young adult days, I was an athlete of a different magnitude. It was short burst of running, you know, the volleyball and, the basketball and and I never thought that I would be in such a place of peace with running long distance um, and liking it and loving it and so now um, that I've done my first full marathon I have one more I keep saying that I'm gonna do one more and then I say that and then I end up registering for another one uh, but <clears throat> I'm doing the um, New Orleans uh, rock and roll full in February. And then I still have you know, some triad, some sprint triathlons that I want to do. I've done one sprint triathlon and I've done a, I've become a duathlete. So, um, I'm just, just reaching out there. Oh, and I have a, I have an ultra marathon on the back burner too. <laughs> Well, maybe uh, New Orleans isn't far from me, so maybe I'll see you down there for the for the rock and roll. Oh, that'll be cool. That'll be so cool. <laughs> you mentioned before that you had some medical things going on. How you know? I know obviously physically and weight wise you're different, but medically speaking, how is life different for you now than it was you know ten years ago? I pay more attention to. Um, what's going on with my body physically. Um, I pay more attention to the importance of knowing your numbers. Um, like I just had my physical and I don't just let the doctors tell me everything's normal. I make them give me my results. I make them hand me my results. So I want to see the numbers myself. Because I can make those numbers better. Um, I look at my cholesterol level, which is good, but I can, it can always be better. Um, I compare it to the year previous, and it's better, which means next year is going to be a better number. That's awesome. 
And I'm, you know, I know you said in a message to me that you at some point were working with an organization. I think it was called Black Girls on the Run. Is that right? Yeah, Black Girls Run. Mm -hmm. Black Girls Run. Why is it important for you, or or what ways are you trying, you know, for the future? What do you see your part in giving back to the community that you've that you've come from, that you're still a part of? Um, not just necessarily within your immediate family, but also kind of on a bigger level. If I could reach, if I could reach one person and to help one person get off of blood pressure medicine, get off of diabetes medicine, for me, that's a big accomplishment. Um, because these medications cost a lot of money and it's not just, it's, it's, it's it's not just damaging one thing it it's it's a full circle i mean it you know diabetes and high blood pressure uh, it attacks your sight your heart your kidneys your liver everything I mean, and then your limbs and then if i could reach one person to turn it around for them and then they see the light they're going to reach out to somebody else and they're going to help somebody turn it around. Um, that's my whole goal is to help people, you know, turn it around when, you know, cause there are people out there that think that this is it. I have to take my medicine. I'll just take my medicine every day. And they don't think that they can turn it around and they can turn it around and not have to take another pill. So that would be me, you know, giving back. Do you think you yourself were previously in that position where you thought, I can't turn it around. I'm just going to take, you know, the medicine when it comes and whatnot. Yeah. Mm hmm. Definitely. Wow. Well, what, um, you know, what are you looking forward to in the future? I know you, you mentioned you have a, uh, you know, the, the full in February, but, but other, other than that, you know, whether it's health or life goals, you know, what are you looking towards the future? What are, you know, what are, what's kind of on your list um, of things that you're wanting to accomplish in the next, you know, year to five years? Um, well, at one point I was in nursing school and um, I was actually in my nursing, nursing clinicals when my mom passed away. And then my dad passed away six weeks after she did. So my focus just went all the way out the window. And I, you know, I never, I've always wanted to finish and, you know, raising two boys on my own was a single mom. It was really hard to get back into it. So here within the last two or three weeks, I've been working on the process of getting back, re-entering nursing school and finishing. So that's um, one of the things that I'm working on is to finish my nursing degree. And the other thing, thing that I'm working on is just becoming a life coach, you know, a, a health or some sort of um, health coach to, you know, help other people get better. So, I mean, I, and I never thought that I would be doing that, but I've had people say to me, you need to do this. You need to do this. You're helping a lot of people because I never thought that so many people was watching me or following me on Facebook because I've had people inbox me and they say, hey, guess what I did today? I walked two miles or guess what? I went to the doctor today and my, or they'll send me their blood pressure readings or they'll say, I don't have to take this medicine anymore. Thank you. And, and I'm like, I never thought in a million years that I was being an impact on people in such a, in a good way. That's awesome. So for somebody who's at the beginning of this journey, who's trying to figure things out, who maybe, you know, is where you were, is looking towards an uncertain future and is needing some inspiration, what advice would you give to that person on day one of trying to turn things around? The one piece of advice that I always give is um, that it's a process. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. And to small steps, I always say small steps. Um, even if you, you're taking small steps and you fall off one day, 
you just get back up the next day. So I always share small steps and I say, hey, if you have a break and you eat ice cream the next day or you don't exercise the next day, just follow back up. Just get back on. Get get back on it the next day. Don't dwell on it. Don't, uh, you know, don't, 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 don't beat yourself up about it. Just get back up and carry on. Um, but I always emphasize small steps because sometimes people have a tendency of, you know, to have this, this, you know, fire in them that they want to go and they're going to do all of this and they're going to, they're going to do all of that. And then it becomes overwhelming and they set unrealistic goals. And you're more successful when you set small goals versus setting these huge goals that are unrealistic and that you're not going to meet. So when you set small goals, you meet those small goals, you work on the next small goal. So I always, my one um, bit of advice has always been to set small goals and take small steps. Awesome. And if you could go back in time and have a conversation with yourself, you know, 56 pounds heavier, um, you know, at that place where you were before, what, what words of encouragement or advice would you give to that person? Um, <laughs> I would say I should have started sooner, but at least you've started. Um, you're on the right track. I would say um, words of encouragement I would give is to, even if you fall down, you get back up um, and you keep going. So um, I kind of learned that literally because I've taken a fall or two while being out on the run and just get back up and keep going. Um, that would be the one thing I would say to myself, you know, even if you fall, Get back up and keep going. That's great. And then lastly, where can people find out more about you and what you're up to and connect with you? Um, people can connect with me on Facebook. Um, Jackie Cobb. I'm on Facebook as Jackie Cobb. And then on Instagram, I'm at, at um, Jackie the Runner. 